And I just love that it made it into the Bible. <laughs> right? If this is a made-up yeah. book, why would you put this in there? Welcome to the Bible in One Year podcast brought to you by Two Brits and a Bible. Today is day 59 and we're going to be covering Deuteronomy 3 and 4. In Deuteronomy 3, Moses recounts the history of Israel, Og, king of Bashan, being defeated, the Reubenites, Gadites, and half of Manasseh being given the land east of Jordan. And in Deuteronomy 4, Moses recounts God making Israel a great nation, the Ten Commandments, and other laws. Okay, my brother, let us start with Deuteronomy 3, verse 1. That's really good. The only thing I can do in a Jamaican accent is uh, bacon, which is just beer can. Yeah, we've all heard that one. That's if it. you haven't, where have you been? Correct. But um, yeah, you can actually do that. Yeah, anyway, Deuteronomy 3, right at the beginning here. I love the way God can just be like, no, do this, this, and this, and this is what's going to happen. It makes life so much easier. Um, where it's mm -hmm. saying right in there, uh, go up, um, yeah, turn towards Bashan and old king of Bashan. His whole army worked, walked, marched out to meet us. The Lord said to me, don't be afraid of him. I've delivered him into your hands, along with his whole army and his land. Do to him what you did to the king of Sihon and the Amorites. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, what do I do? God's like, no, no, I've got this. All right, cheers, God. Thanks very much. Yeah, I love that. I absolutely love that. And the way you were explaining it uh, before recording as well, just, you know, you can keep going as long as it's in line with God and God will let you know if there's a stopping point or whatever. Yeah, typically. And I, I really like that as a guiding sort of thought, really, because sometimes I get sort of stuck up and uh, stuck in my thoughts and like, oh, should I do this? Should I do that? And it's like, just keep going. And, and you know, you'll, you'll work it out quite quickly. Yeah. It, and as long as you're praying into it and giving it over to God, you know. Um, I'm going to start with one that isn't at all meaningful, really, which is just the size of Og, king of Bashan's yeah, bed. Yeah, banging, isn't it? His bed was, yeah, his bed was decorated with iron and was more than nine cubits long and four cubits wide. Deuteronomy 3.11, I put, tis a mighty bed. And I happen to remember that we looked up, you looked up, that a cubit is roughly one and a half feet. So that means that it's a 13 and a half foot by six foot bed. That's so it's... It's enormous. It reminds me, actually, when Melody and I were in Uganda, we went to a place on some of the crater lakes and the bed there, they literally pushed two like doubles together to make a single bed. It was wider than it was long. I'm like, I'm sleeping widthways on this bad boy. So my feet don't hang out at the end. It was amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. I love that. Yeah. I guess that was a sign of his power or something. The fact that he yeah, that, but... custom bed sheets on that bad boy, aren't you? <laughs> and I just love that it made it into the Bible, <laughs> right? If this is a made-up yeah. book, why would you put this in there? Correct. So random. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, we'll go for a brutal one right. next. So go uh, go up to the top of Pisgah, look west and north and south and east look at the land with your own eyes since you are not going to cross this jordan this is moses recounting obviously not being allowed in the land and i just thought it's so brutal but it's got that like slight dark humor in there that i just i love that yeah. idea that god has that sort of sense of humor with us and um you were saying about why you know this couldn't really be made up it, it, this is like frank churik uh famous christian apologist frank churik talks about one of the reasons to believe the Gospels are true is because there are these um, embarrassing details that no one would want to put into a public record yeah. or a book, right? And this is, again, an, an embarrassing detail for Moses. Um, you know, yeah. I just don't believe if he was making this up, he would add this. It doesn't make it's sense. It's like he's been on a game show. It's like, let's see what you could have won. Yeah, right. Exactly. Nice. Exactly. Um, so I'm going to harp on a little bit here for a minute or two, if that's okay with you. Um, 3.23 to 29. Uh, basically, it's going on about here. At that time, I pleaded with the Lord to show you like what he can do. Like who is there that's going to be bigger and greater than this? Like basically just pleading them to go and actually do what God's telling them to. Um, it's, it's like just this quick, 
quit procrastinating and do it. And it's this whole thing about you have permission, just step into what God's calling you to do. And I'm going to pull up, I found an amazing thing by a daily prophetic on Insta. And effectively it was it's entitled permission granted. And it's saying stuff like, we don't want to step outside of God's will, which is good, but that often becomes an excuse for passivity and indecision. Um, we're waiting for permission. He's already given us like the okay for, or at least if it's not contrary to his word. And actually, Actually, at times we can give we can put more trust in the devil's ability to deceive us than in the Holy Spirit's power to lead us and guide us. And we need mm. to be living as though God has said yes until he says no, provided it's in line with his will and his calling on our lives. Like there, there has to be a balance, but we can't just wait for, a, you know, parting of the clouds every time we want to do something. We have to take a bit of initiative in it. Absolutely. And that reminds me of something I was watching on in a Matt Chandler sermon recently. He was talking about sometimes you will just be sort of feeling like you're suffering and struggling in a season and you'll feel like God isn't actually there with you like he is, but you won't feel it. And there won't be, as you say, a parting of the clouds moment. Yeah. And that, even that is God working on you. And and I, I don't want to say testing your faith because that's not right at all. But, you know, just allowing your faith that you've developed and the strength that you've got from his word yeah. to, to eventually manifest, you know what I mean? So I think there's good links there yeah. as well. Um, mm -hmm. Having said that, the Lord, your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God, Deuteronomy 4.24. So we can be secure in knowing that God is jealous of us. He wants our love. He wants our worship, even though to be very clear, he doesn't need our love or need our worship. But I feel great about the fact that, God is a jealous yeah, God. He wants exactly. He's chosen. He wants a relationship. Exactly. Um, skipping into uh, Deuteronomy 4, verse 8, it's just to confirm a lot of the stuff we've been saying for a long time now, it says, and what other nation is so great as to have such righteous decrees and laws as this body of laws that I'm saying before you today? It's just basically saying what we've specified, that other cultures, other nations weren't as forward thinking or revolutionary as this. So, you know, this is so far ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. And and I sort of, at an end of an episode the other day, I was saying about how you can sort of see God building up to Jesus. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of apologetics that I've watched and stuff talk a lot about why Jesus came in the way he did, why he suffered and died in the way he did. Yeah. And it was all part, obviously, of a perfect plan. And that's why we can see that God is progressing the culture of Israel like historically you can see accurately because we know what the babylonians were like we have details yeah. of that we can see that the israelites were better but also some of the stuff it was done in step by step so you actually can lead these stubborn israelites to a better pro to a better culture from you know incest and burning babies yeah. and stuff right? yeah and i just i I just love that progression and you seeing it unfold across the Bible and it's all pointing to yeah. Messiah. So that's really cool. Last one that I had for today is just uh, you, the Lord, your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon or destroy you or forget the covenant with your ancestors. And I just literally wrote quite simply, we don't deserve yeah. him. He's, and that's in 431, said, just so people know. Yeah. Deuteronomy 431. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. No, it's just it's stated so clearly. Again, the beauty of Deuteronomy is it has these like big points just put down into this little bite sized nugget, and it's great. Um, I found it quite amusing in 425, where basically Moses is saying, after you've had children and grandchildren and lived in the land a long time, you will become corrupt and you will worship other gods. <laughs> it's like, given the history that he's experienced with Israel, he's like, there's a pretty good chance you're going to ruin this again. So I'm just going to just going to go out on a limb here and say, you're going to, you're going to cock it up again, guys. But yeah, absolutely. And it must be devastating for Moses in one sense to know that, but that's also still hasn't. Yeah. I mean, he's got them there, I guess that's the hard part. Um, sure, and then absolutely. just briefly at the end, it does go on to chat a little bit more about the uh, cities of refuge as well. So, you know, obviously the consequences there are very clear and it makes it easier for them to, to honor that. Sweet. Well, love you to engage with us at two Brits and a Bible on Instagram. Please consider liking and subscribing to help spread the word of God. 